Hey guys, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. So here's the question. What happens when your test motor is somehow missing 50 foot pounds of torque? In this video, we're going to take a look at two very cool tests on a carbureted 5 liter Ford 302 motor. First, we're going to start out with timing. We're going to demonstrate why we continue to add timing until it stops making power. And then what happens if we continue to add timing beyond that point? Then we're going to figure out how to get the missing 50 foot pounds of torque by changing our collector extensions on the headers. This is an interesting test that demonstrates the effect of timing and it also demonstrates the way that we go about testing on, on any motor, certainly a new one. So we'll start out like we did with this 302. This is the 302 that we used to, that I used to test the, compare the E303 Ford cam to the E303 Plus cam from Summit Racing. This was a 302 Marshall Engines rebuilt 302 short block. It had the um, Ford Racing E303 camshaft in it. It had a set of Blueprint aluminum 190 CC cast heads on as cast heads, uh, performer RPM intake manifold, the dual plane, and a 750 Holley, and then our headers, which we're also going to show the effect of the collector length extension in the next section of the video. But we ran this thing on a variety of different timing levels, and this is what we always do, especially when we're putting a new motor up, or we'll start out with low timing and then adjust the timing up until the thing stops making power. And I wanted to show you that we can keep going up in timing and the power can actually stay the same, but you would always want to run the timing level that gives you the combination of the most power, but with the lowest amount of time. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we ran our Ford 302 five liter motor starting out with 30 degrees of timing. It's important to note that on the MSD distributor, this, this distributor on our carbureted combination was locked out. So it had the same amount of timing everywhere, which might not be optimum and certainly would not be what I would recommend on the street. So we would want less timing down low and then you'd want timing to increase with engine speed. Ultimately, it will usually be on these carbureted applications, especially if you have a aggressive combination of springs and weights in it. Usually the timing is all in by 3000 or 3500 in a lot of these performance applications. But in our case, timing was all in even at 2500. But here's what happened when we changed the timing on our combination while we were running it on the dyno. So we started out with an indicated 30 degrees. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you that it's an indicated 30 and maybe not be an actual 30. And the reason for that is I didn't um, TDC the motor. What I did before I ran this is because we have a, um, a piece of wire basically as our timing pointer. What I did was just bring this, rotate the motor around with the spark plugs out and bring the piston up to TDC. And I did that by measuring. I just stuck a screwdriver in there and rotated it back and forth to get an idea when the screwdriver stopped going up and down basically. And then I marked that with our a uh, piece of wire and the TDC point on the on the timing mark on the damper. But it's not really critical that that's the actual number. All I'm showing you is that we go up to a point, and even if we never even looked at the number, we just go up to a point where the thing stops making power, and then we use that, we use that timing curve. So that's exactly what we did here. But on an indicated 30 degrees, our combination produced 393 horsepower and 369 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we went up, let's say five degrees will go up. So we went from a, an indicated 30 to an indicated 35 degrees, and we did indeed pick up power, not a lot down low, but we picked up some power up the top. So we were up right at 400 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 376 foot-pounds. But as an interesting side note, here's, here's what happens when we went up another five degrees to an indicated 40. So with an indicated 40 degrees, the timing curve or the power curve was actually identical. So it made the same power as it did at 35 degrees. And the reason that I wanted to show you this is if you had to choose between these two when you're out on the street, and we ran all this all this testing on 91 California pump gas, we're running in the motor fairly cold, like 140 degrees, so we're able to get away with this kind of stuff. But of the two of these, you would definitely want the power curve at 35 degrees, at an indicated 35 degrees, and not the one at 40 degrees. And the reason for that is you want to make as much power as you can, but at the lowest timing level so that you don't have to worry, obviously, about detonation. This is an important aspect where we're going in and tuning. And as you can see, we started out with low timing and it made less power. And then we went up in timing and it made more power. And then we went up in timing again and it didn't make any more power. So we'd know to stop at are indicated 35 degrees.
Because people get so wrapped up about flow, both on the intake side and the exhaust side, I like to demonstrate, there's nothing I like better than demonstrating the effect of actual scavenging. Like on the intake side, it's the reflected wave, and then we, we have a similar thing on the exhaust side, but in reverse, basically. So this is a really good illustration. It also shows some of the things that we have to go through when we're running a motor on the dyno to cure problems before we can actually start testing. And that's exactly what happened here. This was our 302 5 liter Ford test motor that we ran the E303 versus the E303 Plus from Summit Racing. But while we were testing it, this thing already had a camshaft in it. I'll be doing a video on that. This was the Extreme Energy 274 camshaft. And the motor was, when we first started, I had run this motor many, many times before in the past, and we put it back on. But one of the things I changed on this, when we put it back up on the dyno, we had already burned out a set of headers that we had had for 15 or 20 years. And so we replaced the headers. The guys at West Tech had Schoenfeld actually build them a set of dyno headers, which make... Uh, access to the plugs and wires and everything much easier and they're easier to install. These were inch and three quarter headers and they also had a three and a half inch um, collector on them with a elongated collector extension but as we'll see it was not nearly long enough but we didn't know that. <laughs> so what we did was when I first put the motor up on the dyno we uh, configured the 302 it had a dual plane intake manifold a performer rpm it had a 750 carburetor on it it had the blueprint heads on it and it had that extreme energy camshaft and as i said we run it many times before we put our headers on and i started making preliminary load ins and you can see the kind of curve so the power was way way down like the torque curve was just terrible um, from about 2700 when we were starting the load up to about 4000 from there on it was actually producing the torque that we expected which is in the 375 foot pound range and we didn't even rev the motor when we were doing this testing yet because we want to figure out what was going on so we tried all sorts of things to cure this problem I tried a different carburetor we tried a different set of plugs I tried a different set of plug wires we tried varying the air fuel ratio we tried varying the timing we tried a number of things to try to, I even took the thing apart and did a compression test on it to make sure the motor was still happy that nothing happened while the motor was sitting since the last time we ran it we ended up doing a number of things and then it dawned on me I asked myself the same question I always ask okay what did you change what is different now about the motor than the last time that you ran it <clears throat> and there were a couple of changes one was we ran it with a dual plane RPM with a divider that came all, all the way up to the carburetor. But having run that before, I didn't think it would make this kind of change, and it normally doesn't. But the other thing that did change was we were now running these Schoenfeld uh, dyno headers with a three and a half inch collector on them. They were inch and three quarter, but I've run inch and three quarter versus inch and seven eight many times. But normally when we run the headers, like the hooker headers we've been running for a long time, or inch and five eighths with a three inch collector and we'd almost always run collector extensions off of them or sometimes collector extensions with mufflers so I thought you know what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and try to run I'm going to add another collector extension so what we had here and I'll show you a photo up it is we have the a collector extension which basically is a three and a half inch section of tubing with a slip fit uh, swedge on one side so they just slid on to the existing headers and I'm going to show you the difference because it's very important to demonstrate what happens when you change the scavenging effect from the design of the header so here's what happened when all I did was put this collector extension on and you can see all of a sudden now we have a completely different power curve, <laughs> especially in the 2700 to 4000 RPM range. If you take a look at the curve, you see that uh, at 3500 or anywhere in that range, we have a difference of 50 foot pounds of torque. And this has nothing to do with the signal to the carburetor. It has nothing to do with air fuel. It has nothing to do with timing. It's only the change in this scavenging effect offered by this change in collector because as I said when we were running it with the short collector extension I tried varying the air fuel it didn't do anything I tried varying the timing it didn't do anything but sticking this <laughs> section of three and a half inch tubing on had a dramatic effect on the power curve and now we were able to after after hearing this problem now we were able to go and do all the testing because now the motor was doing what it's supposed to be doing so it shows a couple of things one obviously big change in power from a collector extension, obviously. And then also, 
Uh, it's very important when you have long jib headers. Obviously, most people would not be running them with open headers the way that we do. Sometimes the guys do at the drag strip. Most of them will be running them with full exhausts and stuff, and obviously that works out a lot better. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from this testing run on our carbureted 5 liter Ford 302 motor? First, starting with the timing. What we do is start out low and then we continue to add timing until the motor stops making power. Now we showed going beyond that point, and this is what will happen almost every time, is if you go beyond that point, what will happen is you'll stop making power. And then if you continue to go beyond that point, you'll start losing power. And if you go beyond that point, you'll start losing very expensive engine pieces because usually damage will occur. So now our second test was run on our exhaust header, our inch and three quarter headers with a three and a half inch collector extension. And by increasing the length of that collector extension, we brought back our missing 50 foot pounds of torque. Awesome stuff. But here's my question for you. And I want you guys to comment in the video. What do you think would happen if we went even smaller on the header? For instance, inch and three quarter primary headers, but with a three inch collector with the necessary extension or even inch and five eight primary headers with again a three inch collector with the necessary collector extension would we pick up even more low speed power would we lose more top end power what do you guys think will happen armature holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff i'll keep testing